Thank you, Chair, and dear colleagues, dear Commissioner. The geopolitical climate for Europe is getting harsher, and we step up our efforts to secure vital entities in our single market as a whole. We respond to the growing impacts of climate change and to gaps and vulnerabilities that opened up in the pandemic. And this directive really well complements our new DORA Act on financial services and our newly updated NIS2 directive for the resilience of digital infrastructure. And my colleagues already mentioned several other important legislation that has been built up in this house, and this is one of them. This is where the magic happens too. It lowers the bureaucratic burden by creating a single point of contact for businesses on these three and more legislations and streamlines requirements and reporting. This is a huge success and showcases the true potential of what benefits the EU and cooperation in general can bring. I am also happy to see that the risk assessment by member states will now include cyber threats and risks for cross-sectoral or cross-border nature. This has been an important addition, as we see our adversaries increasingly blurring the lines in their attacks and switching between domains. I was hoping that the spirit of security of cooperation and open access will prevail in the form which I proposed, that we will find ways to regularly publish findings of the Critical Entities Resilience Group for the general public for use in academia and security research, of course adequately anonymized. Unfortunately, we still have some trust to build in this, I see. That, of course, does not, does not hinder the important work that has been done. This directive is timely and relevant, and it is my hope that Member States will diligently transpose it into their national laws, together with TORA and NIS2. Thank you.